Today, Rob Scott and I are going to talk about identity shifting, which is a you know, huge part of his coaching methodology for his company, Fundamental Shift. So today we're going to talk about that. Easy question, hopefully. What does it mean to shift your identity? That's a phenomenal question. And it's, there's, there's a quick answer maybe, and then there's a much longer discussion we could have about it. Because I mean, if I were to ask you, like, what are you? It's, it's a very difficult question to answer, right? It's, mm -hmm. we, don't, we, don't yeah. really, we don't really have that at the ready in, in most cases. And sometimes you might feel like, well, I'm a parent. You know, you might feel like, well, I'm a business owner. You might feel some days like I'm anxiety, right? Or I'm right. sadness or whatever. So we're actually much more quite often than we think we are. Like, like I'm here to tell you that you're actually a big, a, you're a much bigger deal. You're a much bigger thing uh, than you think you are. And we tend to get locked down into specific problems, specific challenges, the annoyance of the moment, and life can feel very small and very little. Um, mm -hmm. So in a, in a certain sense, and I can give you some examples of this, but uh, you know, a big part of what we are is actually a bunch of unconscious narratives, right? So if you think about uh, one way to talk about identity is almost like a continued narrative that you're telling yourself about yourself, okay? Oh. Yeah. So you have a story of what you are. And you, in your story, you've got, it's a big, long story. You've got a whole history there, but you've also got, I'm good at this. It's okay to make this much money, but that much money is too much. I can't even conceive of that, right? There's, there's all these stories that we, we're not even aware of. Uh, so we could even say that a lot of that story is unconscious to you and almost mm -hmm. kind of re-manifesting itself, right? There's another dimension we could say you're kind of your ego. You know, some people are kind of more id. Like there's, you know, there's deeper things that we could get into here. But when we talk about this, like what is it for you to become a profoundly different version of yourself. Like what would really the ideal version of you be if you could strip your limits, if you could get rid of everything, right? And here's an interesting detail about that. For most people, and, and let's, let's take somebody who's actually pretty dysfunctional in some way, like they've got a lot of unconscious limits, they've got a lot of maybe self-hatred or self-loathing going on, and they just, maybe they're depressed a lot and all that. To ask that person to see a really great version of themselves they're probably going to see still a pretty limited, pretty small version. So when I talk about identity shifting in its best version, I'm really talking about like a true metamorphosis, right? So think mm -hmm. about a caterpillar who's going into a cocoon. If, it, if you had no idea that a butterfly was a thing, that looks like it's death, right? It just looks like yeah. it's a complete death. But when it breaks out, it actually you know, starts to flap into a completely different thing, this beautiful butterfly that's, that's actually transformed, that's actually gone through a metamorphosis. So what I'm standing very loudly in the center of is that there's a possibility for you to be profoundly different than you are uh, in a way that's maybe even bigger than you think possible. Like very often I will hold a higher vision for a client than they're comfortable holding at the beginning. And very quickly they get on board and see what's, you know, see what they can do. And it's, it's really pretty astounding. So to maybe relate that back to my story, when I was deeply dysfunctional, what I thought I wanted and what I would have told you would have been an ideal me was nowhere near what I actually am today. Right. And it doesn't mean that I learned to fly or that I'm superhuman or there's anything like that, but the amount of confidence and calm and uh, just ease of being and, ability to succeed at things and, and uh, my ability to focus and relate to people deeply and healthily, uh, I wouldn't have even known to ask for those things, right? Like I just, I couldn't even see that from where I was, right? So shifting your identity is profound. And, you know, maybe we can get into some specific examples of what I've done with clients and things like that. But uh, I hope that starts to point at what I'm talking about there. It's really becoming a profoundly different version of yourself that's far more ideal than you are right now. Well, yeah, let's, let's do that then. So what sort of changes have you seen for your clients who, who go through your programs in terms of, of shifting their identities? I'm fascinated sure. now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So it, it always encompasses more because we sort of talked about how the identity has so many parts, right? So there's a little bit about uh, rewriting unconscious patterns, um, thinking and focusing in a different and new way, like gaining some real tools. So in your conscious mind and your unconscious mind, having profound breakthroughs in, in both of those, um, your emotional reality gets deeply changed. Your ability to show up and do and like not procrastinate and self-sabotage, that sort of dissolves and all that stuff. Uh, in a way that might be a little more concrete and explain it, uh, mm -hmm. one example is I had a woman who worked with me who was um, maybe even more than 100 pounds overweight. She was significantly heavier than she wanted to be. And when we got really honest about what she thought about herself in her narrative about herself, you know, she's like, Rob, I'm just a loser. I fail at everything. I can't, I, I will deeply commit to eating differently. And by noon the next day, I'm just like putting the sugar and the junk and the, everything into my mouth. And so she had this experience of just failing at it all the time and not being able to do it. So a lot of coaches would apply like, well, it's just willpower. And if we do it long enough, then something will change. But willpower is needed for the thing that you're not naturally doing, right? So if you yeah. want to become a runner and you're not a runner and you're using willpower, you have to apply will for a long enough period of time. And in our complex world, that's becoming, we have less and less of it, right? Our willpower is being drained all the time. So we mm -hmm. find ourselves not doing that. But the reason that that eventually turns you into a runner is that some, somewhere eventually in your unconscious mind, you just take on, oh, I'm a runner. Oh, There's yes. no resistance to it anymore, right? So once okay. you take that on, you just put on the shoes and you go. In fact, if you weren't running, it would be difficult. Like you'd be like, why aren't I running? Like I'm a runner. What's happening here, right? So that play, rather than using willpower or something external to make yourself do something that's uncomfortable, we go in and we change the identity level first. So I took that woman and we literally turned her into, I am athlete. All right. Now, this is not an affirmation. This is not just a willpower game. This is like her taking on, okay, I may be deeply out of shape. I might be an out of shape athlete, but I'm an athlete. An athlete has running shoes and workout gear. An athlete is active. An athlete feeds themselves a certain way. And they don't freak out if they have a little cake at lunch or whatever. Like they just, you know, maybe go do more work or whatever. Well, this woman started to shed pounds. She actually was still pretty severely overweight, but she became a spin instructor at her gym. She was very uh, inspirational and people loved her. Before you knew it, I she bet. was like doing Ironman type stuff. Like she was lean down all the weight and like a complete fitness enthusiast who was, had really changed her life. So that's a long example. I have shorter examples, but you know, I took a business owner who's phobic about selling and, you know, in the first two weeks, he, uh, you know, he sold 20 grand of his thing. And I don't think he'd ever sold more than five or six, you know, uh, prior wow. to that, uh, like over a whole month. So in a, in a, I think a, a sales couple of days for him, you know, we got him up to that in a couple of weeks and he spent about a couple of days selling. He, you know, sold 20 grand, which was his by far biggest month he'd ever had. Um, somebody phobic about public speaking turned him into, by the end of the, of the breakthrough program, I caught him online, like giving a big talk. Like he was just, he'd, he'd really become thought leader. Um, you know, taking people who had all kinds of uh, psychological damage from things that, uh, traumatic things that had happened to them and got them to just deeply connected. So, you know, relationship stuff, business and success stuff, health stuff, uh, it's all possible if you can go in and edit some of the uh, messy stuff that's going on that's kind of outside your own awareness. Wow. Yeah, that the fitness example really struck something for me just because I, before I had kids, I did fitness competitions, but it took me a while to work up the guess to, you know, feel like that was actually part of my identity. Yeah. Um, because you can feel sure, the difference, right? You know, you know what yeah. I mean, right? Yeah. 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 Because, you know, initially I had a, a leader and while I was in the army, I had a leader who was very much into it. And I was like, no way, not yeah. me. But then I ran a couple of half marathons that on purpose that I trained for. And then I was like, well, if I could do that, then I should be able to get up there right, right. on stage and do it. And it took time, but for a long time, that was like, that was definitely in my mind. Like I, it became a part of my narrative. And to some extent, I think that it's still there, even right. though I haven't done even it. Even though you're not acting years. on it, but it's, it's still yeah. in, in that sense of self, right? So there's yeah. a shorter path to get there. And that's maybe the most unique thing that I've figured out and, and, and really applying here. It's, it's really quick uh, rather than this external grueling willpower game. So another example really quickly is there, I know so many people that are in the corporate world and mm -hmm. 
they kind of hate it. You know, maybe they realize that it's more of a yeah. politic game or whatever, and they're dying to be an entrepreneur. So they're studying it and maybe they're taking courses in it and all that, but in their own narrative, they're more entrepreneur than entrepreneur, right? They haven't taken it on. They're dying to do it, but they haven't owned it yet. And what people need to understand is if you're an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, like an entrepreneur goes and builds a business and hires people and does, you know, like you go do that thing. And so the, the behaviors are within the identity, right? Like, mm -hmm. like prior. So if your identity is, I'm not that yet, I need another course, I need another thing, you're, there's a fiction going on where you're putting it out into the future and you can really take it on, internalize it down deep in your sense of self. And once you do that, it becomes very natural to do these things. Like all of a sudden you're like, oh, like, well, let's actually go get that LLC started and I'm going to hire this person and we're going to do whatever. Now you have a side gig and now you're actually making money and you can leave the job and you really right. are entrepreneur. We turned you into entrepreneur. So that's uh that's the game that's what we're doing okay all right so i think you've kind of you kind of touched on this a little bit i think maybe in our first episode but i'm curious about some of the differences you see between your coaching methodology and and some of the things like you mentioned like more behavior specific coaching yeah so yeah, I think the behavior specific coaching, it's not that it doesn't have a point, right? If you need a certain mm -hmm. skill, getting a coach and a certain skill is great. Um, but it's often not complete, right? So it, right. let's say that let's say that you self sabotage and you barely see it. But, you know, right when it gets to be that big time that you're going to do that big sales call that's important, you notice that you're putting it off. And so it's hard to see that it's even self sabotage, because you'll have a good reason for it, right? Something will pop up or whatever. But if you really get honest or it happens long enough, you start to go, maybe something's wrong here, right? So you go, oh, well, I need sales training. So then you go through the sales training and you know, you've really learned how to sell or whatever, but you still haven't dealt with that core problem that is the uh, little bit of a broken thing within you, right? I, I talk right. about this being the core solution because uh, you know, if you imagine having a house in the middle of winter and there's a big broken window that just the cold air's flying in, right? The problem is not that like you don't have the thermostat set right. True, true. The, the problem is not whether or not you have a fire in the fireplace. The problem is the broken window, right? So a mm -hmm. lot of times there's many problems in our life, but there's one core problem that is really the issue that needs to be fixed. And when you fix that core problem, a lot of the other problems are easier to solve, right? Another, right. Ex another example of that is uh, oftentimes in addiction, there are problems in every direction. You've lost your license. You're going to lose your kids. You lost your job, right? And so if the addict is just working to like get his job back and goes and gets a career coach to do that, that's fine. And maybe you get that job back, but you haven't addressed the core problem, right? The core problem is that you're an addict and, and you really need to change that. Once you change that, which may be difficult or whatever that is to go through, but once you change that, you notice that all of a sudden your relationships start going better. All of a sudden you don't get DUIs anymore. All of a sudden it's easier to keep your job. All of a sudden, right? So in all these other directions, right? So the core solution is really self-mastery, you know, self-actualization and in right. a sense, almost self-transcendence. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's when you can do that in a profound way that is, and that starts to sound a little too woo for me, but it's a, it's a very tangible and real thing that I could, you know, draw on a napkin for you about what each of those things really are. Once you do those, you then become this better version of yourself that can be applied to just now. I'm, well, I got the big sales thing. I got to just do the big sales thing. It's not, there's no resistance anymore. You don't self-sabotage. You don't have those same limits. That makes a lot of sense. And I think for a lot of the entrepreneurs and business people that I know, they were employees first. Mm -hmm. You know, some some people just kind of hit the ground running, you know, maybe from college or whatever and start start a business. But sure. most of the people I know were employees first. And and uh, that's actually something that I've seen, you know, especially when people are just getting started, they're kind of stuck in their employee mindset right. and relying on other people's deadlines and things like that. So, so self-sabotaging and procrastinating on reaching out to, you know, people who seem like they were really ready to work with you or buy from you or whatever. Right. Um, I feel like that's probably pretty chronic in, in at least my network of, of entrepreneurs, just because if I put it off, like, 
who what, who's going to be upset about that except for me? Right. Like I don't have exactly. a supervisor who's going to be like, did you send that email? So it becomes very easy to do it these little games with ourselves. It becomes very easy to be like, well, I'm busy, but you're really just reorganizing that messy kitchen drawer. You're not really right. doing the meaningful things, right? So yes. yeah, so getting past that, and that's that's subtle. It's not always easy to see that that's really the issue going on. And so that goes back, and again, it may be the other episode, but that goes back to the kind of person that wants to work with me is at least aware that, that there's a deeper issue at play. And once they can be honest about that, because quite honestly, it is, most of us aren't honest, not that we're liars, but we're not even honest with ourselves about what's really mm -hmm. going on because we're captured by the annoying problem. So whatever was distracting us from doing that big sales call, like my kids are loud or whatever, well, it's that, it's that my kids are home or whatever, but there's a thousand successful entrepreneurs who have kids at home that can deal with that because you can't, there's something else that's going on, right? So right. How, do we, how do we get at that and really change that so that you can be optimal, so that you can really be the highest version of yourself? This, this is gonna be so good for so many people. <laughs> oh, good, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm like, ooh, I feel like Rob's been in my inbox or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I mean, in a way, this is why it's hard to niche it down again, because it's like, I'm really, to a great degree, we're addressing the human condition in a, in a bit of a new and different way that's, you know, it may be some overlap between therapy and coaching, although I can't claim any of that, you know, licensing wise, but like, we're really doing something profound and deep and we're, it's, it's faster and it's easier. Um, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of phenomenal therapists and there's a lot of maybe not phenomenal therapists. There's a lot of phenomenal coaches and there's a lot of not phenomenal coaches. And so even navigating that to really get at like, what is the most effective and the quickest path to real profound change in you? Uh, there's, there's a deeper place that you can get to that is actually just this big like relief once you see it and you get through it. Um, actually in our group course, between week two and week three, everybody has this deeply profound kind of epiphany where they've found limits that they didn't even know they had. They've seen how much they've been holding them back. And all of a sudden they become ridiculous to them. And, they, and it's almost like they'll never have the same power over them again. They're just like, that's absurd that I've been carrying that. Like, what have I been doing with that? And that is, I mean, that alone is worth the investment. And then we go on, you know, well beyond that and do other kind of really cool things after that. But that's what we get to like right away. And it's that alone is deeply transformative. Wow. Oh, I feel a bit transformed right now. So that's, 